So today's session will be about our new digital archive collections. I'm really excited about this. I was very excited when Christine offered to do this. Um, I will go over some of the basics. I think most of you have been to ULVLC sessions before, so you know. Um, we are recording this session, so you can go back and look at it later. Um, we also will be taking questions throughout. Um, and if you have a question, please feel free to put that in the chat. I will ask everybody to stay muted while Christine is presenting, um, but I will be monitoring the chat. So please feel free to put any questions in there. If you have any tech issues that come up, you can put those in as well. And I will um, try to help you work through them. If worse comes to worse with tech issues, again, we'll have this recorded so you'll be able to get to it later. Uh, I think that's all of my business out of the way, and I will turn things now over to Christine to get started. Thanks a lot, Jenny. I appreciate it. And uh, I'm glad that everyone else has been able to join to, to learn more about our uh, digital archive collections. I'm going to turn off the video, and uh, I want to just give you uh, a look at some of the new resources that we purchased in the springtime that you might be able to use yourself, but um, probably more likely with students and faculty and maybe as referrals uh, to, to let people know these resources are now available. So uh, the agenda is uh, I'm going to provide some general information. We'll look at vendors and the resources we purchased and we'll do a demonstration of a resource. So just a little bit of information about our collections budget. We are, are allocated a certain amount uh, for the collections every year and it's coming from state funds. That is used in a number of ways, including with our title by title or firm order budget, which is the, the money, for instance, that departments have to be able to buy books and eBooks and DVDs and those kinds of things. And that's a one-time purchase. You know, you, you place the order, you get the invoice, and you've bought the thing and it's in your collection. Then we've got uh, the vast majority of our collections budget on uh, ongoing commitments, subscriptions to, um, journals, journal packages, databases, and that kind of thing. And then there are some other things that we, we purchase, but that's kind of generally it. Either you pay for it and it's done, or it's a subscription and you have to commit to you know pay year after year or else you lose access. Then outside of the collections budget, we may have money that comes in uh, and is available to us more, most likely at the end of the year. And that could be, for instance, that um, our library administration might have been planning to buy some furniture. And they realize, well, that's not going to be able to be uh, delivered and invoiced before the end of the fiscal year. So all of a sudden, here's X amount of money. Can collections spend it right now? And we always can because we keep lists um, of, of resources that people would like. So the kinds of one-time purchases I'm talking about here are digital archive collections, like I'm going to talk about today, ebook packages, and journal archives. Those are pretty typical for the one-time purchases. How do we get the lists? Well, library liaisons submit prioritized lists. They know what their uh, departments are doing, what the faculty are doing, the kind of research that's going on, what students are, are um, being assigned in courses so they can make recommendations and they typically prioritize those lists so that they say you know if the, there are five things on my list but these top two are the ones that we need the most and that really helps us when we're able to you know get a particular amount of money and then allocate it the, the best way possible for the the broadest um, access from various disciplines not everything you know not everything we choose will will be of value to, to religious studies, but um, they maybe get one thing that, or two things that they, along with other disciplines, might find of value. Then we also accept faculty input. There are requests that are submitted by the faculty, and we accept those throughout the year. And then finally, even though I say that these are one-time purchases, 
most of them do have an annual hosting fee or maintenance fee, and that's usually a, a few hundred dollars, but that's not uh, nearly what we're spending when we part purchase the collection initially. So how do you get to these databases? The easiest way, as you're well familiar with, uh, going to our homepage and clicking on the databases link right under the red search box. And that will take you to the databases. And here's an example. This is the first database we're going to be talking about. 19th Amendment Victory and Newspapers History, 1762 to 1923. And if you see in the center here where there's the alphabet A, A to Z, at the very end, you'll see a pound sign, the number sign. And so because we know that 19th is a number, we can um, easily just choose that link. We don't need to worry about the subject at matter. Um, and to the far right here at the top next to all vendors and providers, there's the, the general search box for within this, this database uh, list. But at any rate, you know, it just filters it down so quickly and you only have two to look through and you, you see that ours is the first one. So this data, uh, this archival collection is part seven of the women's suffrage collection by Accessible Archives. And we do have other resources from them. This particular resource they were uh, letting us know about in, uh, at the early part of the year and said, you know, this, um, this is a new product and you might find this helpful. And when we shared that list, uh, around with liaisons and others, SCUA said, hey, you know, we've got several classes, several people from SCUA said, in, in my instruction, this could be valuable. So that was a case that we, um, we had a certain unit that, that was going to be able to use this and um, we were able to provide it happily. Then we've got Gale primary sources and they have, um, a group of databases that they call Archives Unbound. And so if you go into the catalog, you can search Archives Unbound. If you go into the D database A to Z list, you can also search that. The two products that we purchased this year were Witchcraft in Europe and America. And for instance, that Religious Studies and History were both interested in this one. Women Organizing Transnationally, the Committee of Correspondence 1952 to 1969. So when you go into the catalog and look that up, we've got the Archives Unbound record. If you scroll down a little bit, the contents note lists all of these uh, databases that we've purchased over the years. And it's over 100. So that's pretty exciting that we can offer so many. And down here at the bottom, you'll see that when we added these this year, um, our catalogers went ahead and inserted that those you know those two databases in into those two archival collections into the um, record. So um, you can click on access online. I've already done that because there's some been some tech trouble today, and I did not want to rely on links, so I just went ahead and have these open. So here's the Gale Primary Sources Archives Unbound uh, homepage, and there's the the main search box down here you can explore topics like african-american studies british and european history and like they've got a number of different topic areas i'm going to click on collections here and that will show you the 105 that we have uh, access to and let's go down to the w's since those are the ones that we added Witchcraft in Europe and America is over 300 monographs. Um, and then women organizing transnationally has committee uh, documents for the existence of this group. Uh, they, they were around from 1952 to 1969. So it's pretty helpful here. They give a, a really lengthy overview to explain what this group did and who, who they were. Here under the collection facts, you see that this was all from a particular collection at Smith College. That's where they uh, sourced these uh, documents. There are over 56,000 images and you know the date range. Uh, so you can 
search within and I'm going to choose Rose Parsons, who was involved with this group. Um, it says that it found 1170 manuscripts. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to look over here under document type. And yeah, that's, that's all there. That's the only kind of document that they're, they're saying they've got in this, uh, this result. But um, though they show you a few. If you want to see more, you can click on the link and you'll see the rest of them. And uh, so you can go in and see uh, the document itself. And we can go to, let's see if we can go to another page. So here's, here's a letter. Thank for you very much for your kind invitation. Um, so it's, it's all kinds of materials. Let's go back to this uh, slide and we're going to look at Redex. Redex is another company that we work with and we have, uh, have worked with them for numbers of years. So we have other products by Redex. This year we bought these three. African newspapers, the British Library Collection, American Slavery Collections, 1820 to 1922, and that documentation is from American Antiquarian Society. And then Caribbean History and Culture, 1535 to 1920. And I think it is fun to see the range of years that are included and um, who the source is for these things. Uh, it, it does help you to know what you're getting into uh, when you start looking through those resources. And here is the homepage for uh, the African American newspapers. Again, a single search box, and um, then you can go. All right, now I've got four slides for Adam Matthew Digital. We bought uh, more resources from them. They are uh, a Sage Publishing Company out of the UK, and they offer really beautiful platforms. They are they have really great resources great images and, and all that and, and um, features within the, the database so that it makes it a lot easier for people to use uh, the resources. So anyway, they've got, they're very appealing. It's kind of like Canopy for streaming. Everybody likes Canopy for streaming. I don't personally know if everyone likes Adam Matthew, but I do like Adam Matthew. So Archives Direct is uh, resources sourced from the National Archives in the United Kingdom. And so this year we added these three, Apartheid South Africa, 1948 to 1980, Confidential Print Africa, 1834 to 1966, and Confidential Print Latin America, 1833 to 1969. And what they mean by confidential print is that those are British government confidential correspondence documents. So things that might not have been known at the time, but now are out um, and available to the public. And that makes for some interesting research. Then we have the First World War, the complete collection. It's made of four different modules and happily we were able to purchase all four. Uh, it gave us a, a great discount. Well, actually speaking of discounts, I, I need to, to give a shout out to Kate Hill who got a really great deal for the Carolina Consortium members with Adam Matthew, a really good discount, better than what ACERL was able to get. So we, we were definitely able to purchase more this, this year than we would in a typical year because she had made that uh, great deal. But uh, the, the, the components of this are global conflict, personal experience, propaganda and recruitment, and visual perspectives. And then this, this page has kind of a combination of different types of um, products and um, subject matter. We've got America in World War II, oral histories and personal accounts, China, culture and society, socialism on film, the Cold War and international propaganda. So that's a lot of streaming, medieval family life and medieval travel writing. And here's the one that we're going to take a look at. This is just an example. We've got migration to new worlds. And that is two modules, the century of immigration, 1800 to 1900, and the new era. And that one was requested by geography, environment, and sustainability. But of course, it will have value to many other, uh, many other disciplines. 
So here's the homepage, My Great Worlds. And it has this little welcome message and some quick links. Uh, I'd like us to just kind of go through this. Here's the, the tab, um, cho your choices of how to kind of burrow into that. And uh, you can see they do a lot with um, images and, and trying to keep things categorized in a way that's easy to, to look at. So we've got the, the selection criteria, why, you know, how, the, how they chose what was gonna be in here. There's a list of participating libraries and that would be archives and libraries that provided the resources that get added. And then there's their editorial board down, down at the bottom, I think. That's a fun picture. Then we can go into the documents. Now this takes a moment, you know, it doesn't look like anything's happening, but right now it's, it's getting ready to load up here on the, the right by theme. There are the themes that, that are offered. But you can see with the document type here on the left, there are many kinds of resources in here. Uh, things that you might expect like um, correspondence, newspapers, but they've got oral histories, which is great, and um, photographs, postcards, posters, uh, even have scrapbooks. I have not seen a scrapbook, but that would be fun to look at too. So let us um, go down here a little bit further and here are the archives that have resources in the collection. So, oh, here's, here are some museums too. It's not just archives and libraries, it's, it includes museums. All right, um, let's look at journey condi conditions. And they're loading that up. When you look here to the left, you'll notice that a few of these document types are grayed out. That means that they just don't have that kind of a resource in the collection, <clears throat> as you might expect. The, um, this one kind of is interesting. The adventure of a family of immigrants who emigrated to Texas in 1835. And it's a personal account from uh, 1867. This is the kind of uh, this is the kind of information that's provided on our page. You've got the resource itself, and you can click on the images for reading that. Um, here is metadata about about it, um, what archive it came from, a little description about uh, what the resource includes. Um, oh, places that are mentioned and ports that are mentioned within the publication. And various keywords that help, you know, oh, there, there's pirate in there. That sounds intriguing. Uh, so it, this came from the Briscoe Center for American History at the University of Texas at Austin. So they give you a, a good bit of information to give you uh, a sense of what the, um, what's contained in the document. And here is, let's see. It's taking a moment to load here and it's still loading. Okay, so um, there you can go through and look, look at the publication. Then let's take a peek at the oral histories. I think this is, um, really something that people find appealing to be able to listen to someone talk about uh, their life, uh, their experiences. And so here, here's an interview with an individual um, that was uh, conducted on in 1981. And they've got a great transcript set up here. This, it can't load it, but you, you probably have better luck on your computer. But the, the transcript is here so that people can read and listen at the same time or just, or just read if they'd like. That gives you um, some options that are helpful depending on what your learning style is and all. And they, they have a little summary about what's included in that. So oral histories. Now they've got what they call galleries. And they've got a visual gallery, watercolors, and ship plans. I noticed when I looked in the ship plans that they have the plan for the Lusitania in there. Uh, but it, it is interesting when you're talking about traveling so much of the travel was, you know, by ship, of course. Uh, so you can see plans from uh, a, a lot of different ships that had made uh, journeys. Um, 
the visual gallery. Uh, we'll take a peek there. Photographs, posters, a lot of a lot of photographs I noticed of ships. Here is 40,000 men needed in Western Canada to harvest 100 million bushels of grain. So that's an example of, of, of some um, invitation to go take a, a journey. Then we've got the explore tab. Um, this is supplementary information that's, that can be helpful and interesting. What caught my eye right away was this tenement biographies in New York, because there is a tenement museum um, there that I was uh, introduced to. I did not get to go visit it, but when I went to visit family in New York City, they said, this is a really great museum. What had happened was um, someone, uh, some women were very interested in providing uh, a look into the tenement life, the immigrant, the life of immigrants in New York City, and they were able to. They ran across some real estate where the um, the building had not been rehabbed, and so they could really see what the um, buildings look like. And so this this is a, a kind of an interesting take on you know you're thinking about archives and museums and libraries sharing documentation, but there are other kinds of things they can share. Like this is um, the, um, the building itself, which is, is interesting. Okay. Then we've got the convict database. Let's see. Um, let me go back to Explora. I think there was interactive research. That's where I wanted to show us. Here's, here's a different view of the tenement museums. Let's go right zero right in. And so here are floor plans of the different people's apartments, different families' apartments, and that kind of thing. So um, that's useful. Now here they offer a, a migration map. And you can choose what country you want to explore. I'm just going to click on New Zealand. And it starts off, they, they tell you what country, they tell you what year. This is the first year of the data that they're providing for immig immig immigration. Um, and at that, in 1871, there were 2,100 immigrants from across the world to New Zealand. And if you go here, you can see, based on census documents, how many people came from what country. And if we hit play all, you'll see that the year is starting to change. And over here, you're seeing how many immigrants um, were traveling to those new locations. And um, you can just stop it. You can stop it wherever you want to stop it. So I don't know how easily that could be incorporated in, into coursework, but it is fun to, look, to get a sense of how many people were, were going there. So, okay, then let's take a look at the convict database tab. They've got um, the list uh, from whatever um, logs that they had um, for people leaving, and that was people who were being moved out, uh, not of their own choice, but because they were criminals of some kind or considered criminals. And there are convict records for the individual, um, basic trends, and the transportation to New South Wales in uh, Australia. So let's take one look at uh, a record. You can look at when people, when when people were uh, had their trials, when they arrived, um, whether they're male or female, the ship they were on, all kinds of things. And I'm just going to put in a name, and we get one result. Austin McGinty, and so this is from those uh, log books. They have uh, a 14-year sentence, mm. and what ship it was, and and all. And so just just some basic information from the the ledgers that they had. But another you know another intriguing way to look at uh, migration. Then as far as how to use all these resources, um, I think this is something valuable for teachers, uh, for the professors. The teaching tab uh, will give you help with how to cite a, a resource, 
that could also, of course, help students um, putting the static URL in uh, to be able to direct students directly to the um, document that's, that's of uh, use in the assignment. Um, and again, attaching a document. So uh, then if you have questions about fair use and copyright, that that's here as well. So I think with these kinds of resources, the help section can be a good place to look because um, it, it's not the content, but it's how to use the content. And like, here's, here's how, how much material can I copy? But anyway, that is a look at a um, particular database. And so at this point, I'm open to having uh, Jenny share any questions that have come up. All right, thanks so much, Christine. This was great. This was really interesting. I you know, knew of these collections, but I hadn't really thought yet about how I would use them to teach. Um, so I'm really excited to play around with these. So does anyone have any questions? We haven't had any that have come up during the demo, but people may have questions now. And if you want to, you can always unmute yourself um, and ask your question now that Christine's done presenting, or you can put it in the chat. Uh, I know I'm working with a special topics uh, communication studies class this fall um, that's all about suffrage. So I'm really excited about that um, first collection that you mentioned and I'd shared that with them and they were super excited that we had that. So oh, good. Any other questions, comments? I don't see anything coming in. Um, oh, Maggie says, I'm excited that we were able to get all these collections. I know Maggie. That's good news, yes. Helpful, and yeah, it's nice to have good news these days. <laughs> nice and unusual at this point. Um, uh, so, Christine, if people do end up having questions that come up um, about these collections, could they talk to you about them? Would that be okay? Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. Thank you. All right, and I hope that everyone in here can, can vow to go and play with at least one of these collections. Um, since we spent money on them, we should use them. And we should help other people use them. That's definitely why I'm here, because I want us to have good <laughs> statistics for next year. That's right, I think it's going to become even more important. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead in the chat and put um, the link to our assessment form. Um, and I'm going to thank uh, Christine again. Several people in the chat have said thanks, Christine, Catherine, and Michelle most recently. Um, so we really appreciate you sharing these with us. And I really appreciate um, everyone joining us to learn about some of these cool new digital archives that we have. And just in time for lots of online teaching. So I think it's very timely that we have all this cool new stuff. Um, and I'll go ahead and stop the recording now. Thanks, Jenny. Thank